Oh shit, here we go again. It's Sassy Assassin here, back with another Amberlynn Reed related video. So before I begin, I just want to remind everyone that this video is under the Fair Use Act. This video is not meant for children. This video is not meant to bully or harass anyone, including Amber, since she is the subject of today's video. Keep in mind that I'm a big person and I'm entitled to have an opinion about another big person. Also keep in mind that my criticism about Amber in this case is not about her weight. It's about how she, her conduct on her platform, how she treats her audience, how she lies, manipulates, and gaslights her audience, and how she clickbaits and monetizes off her critical health issues. If I talk about things that I am doing for my channel, that I need for my channel, I'm not begging for money. I do accept donations, but I'm not asking for it. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, hit the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video or any of the videos I've made so far on my platform, please feel free to leave a comment below or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. Thanks. Well, hello, guys. So, oh my god. Um, I'm sorry I haven't responded to the comments in the last video yet. I have been just really busy today and I will get to him soon um, honestly I missed my echocardiogram because I slept in because yesterday really wore me out m more than I thought it would and the heat index is really high right now and I woke up a little after like basically after the appointment time which is three, which is like weird. And I felt really nauseous and had a really bad migraine. And my body was just screaming. It was, I was in so much pain and I'm like, shit, I missed my appointment. I'm in, oh my God, it was bad. So I, I was going to go to the gym today, but I'm like, there's no way. Like I need to do it every other day because I need, my body needs time to rest. And I keep on pushing to do back to back days, but my doctors say you need to do every other day or, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> I, you know, I get so excited after com co coming home from the gym and I get like, um, I'm happy and I just want to go back so bad. And I think I'm going to just fuck it and just do another day. And then I wake up that day and my body feels like it's been hit by a bus. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I just need to check myself a bit anyways. Um, other than that, it's just really hot here, right here right in my part of the woods right now. Um, we still haven't got the liner situation for a pool figured out. We're looking to repair ourselves because the pool company is just pulling a fast one. And I don't think there's any way they're going to, um, renege on the fact that there, that the, that, that allegedly our pool liner is not theirs, but it, it's just such bullshit. Um, we can't even get a hold of the old owner to talk to them about it. And uh, just, it, it's just a mess. But anyways, um, hopefully going to be going to the lake this weekend. Um, depending on the weather, how hot it's going to be. Cause I'm, I don't want to put my parents through like that kind of heat, you know, and that because it's so muggy outside right now. Like I can't even sit outside and enjoy the, the fresh air and everything. Cause it's, it just doesn't feel fresh. You know what I mean? It just feels hot and muggy and just disgusting. So, um, that's why I've been inside most of the day because it's just ridiculous. So I'm hoping the storm that we're going to have is going to like, hopefully make it better. I, I don't know. But anyways, um, so we've all been wondering if there's something going on and speculating that maybe somebody is moving. Either Eric and Ricky have already moved out or Amber's moving out. Now, this is funny because a lot of people predicted this and I guess maybe they heard on the grapevine somewhere that, that this was a possibility. So I'm kind of curious as to where she's going to be going. Is she getting her own place? 
Is she going to be moving up with her mom in Oklahoma? Like, yeah. Or maybe she's moving closer to where the hospitals are just so the, you know, it's not so much of a drive and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe she's going to get her own house. I don't know. But, um, at this point, you know, um, aside from all the, the crap that she's been pulling, I'm hoping that this move is going to be in the step in the right direction for her. Um, I always try, I'm an, I'm, I'm an optimistic person and I always try to hope for the best for people, you know, even though I'm angry at them, even though I don't like the kind of behavior that they're putting out, there's always a side of me that's just like, well, you know, maybe this is a step in the right direction, but you guys, all, you know how I feel about the, the whole situation as a whole, but, but you know, anyways, let's get into this video. I have it down to 1.25 and it's on hook tube and ad block is on, but I, because I was missing on things that she was saying in the last video and the last several videos and, um, I had it on to the speed too high. So yeah, I, I just want to hear what she has to say. And cause I, I, I get easily distracted and I miss stuff. So yeah. All right. Let's get into this video. Hey guys. So I have like a huge update type thing. What's the date today? The eighth. The eighth. So today is July 8th, if you guys are curious, and I will be eating Subway. So don't get mad at me. Um, I did try to choose a healthier option, um, which I normally do try to do. I got light mayonnaise, which is only like 35 calories, onion, olive, and literally just turkey, and that's all that's on here. And I have a diet soda. So I woke up intentionally. I was gonna Dude, you shouldn't be having soda in general, girl. I mean... That's like the worst thing you can have with cancer. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, see, I, I've never had cancer. Um, I've, you know, I've never been really close to somebody who's had it, you know, so I don't know, but I've, I've been hurt. I've heard that cancer feeds on sugar and whether it's diet or not, it has a, still has a shit ton of sugar in it. <sighs> she needs to stick to Stelter water and, um, like, just, there's uh, seltzer water, you know, sparkling water, like LaCroix. I mean, LaCroix would be a, a good thing for her to drink. I'm going to make cauliflower fried rice. I literally was laying in bed as soon as I woke up and I was like, that's what I'm going to do. That sounds so good. Like, I already had all the ingredients planned out in my head. I got up okay, and I went to go to the kitchen. It's a wreck. So, I'm going to explain why. Um, a lot of things have been happening as you guys know like I'm getting a hysterectomy soon and I'm talking soon it's in less than a week so um I'm terrified and before that you're supposed to be calm and serene and I'm not even eating I'm probably not going to let's be honest because I just feel like I need to talk um before surgery you're supposed to be like as calm as you can and getting you know the little odds and ends ready before surgery and just being positive and not stressed I am the very opposite of that right now um so a little flashback. It was probably two and a half months ago, Becky and I decided, let's move out. Let's create a life for us, because we're almost 30, you know? So we wanted to try something different. And we wanted to be closer to her family. So we went and we found this house. And I was hinting at it um, in videos. I was talking about how like something really good could be happening soon and this whole thing. And during that time, like, okay, so we went and saw the house. We loved it, obsessed, you guys, it was gorgeous, okay? And during that time with the whole looking for a house, you know, we broke the news to Eric and Ricky that we were gonna move out and stuff like that. During that whole commotion is when I found out I had cancer. So it was like this big, okay, I have cancer. What's gonna happen next? My mom's gonna come and visit, but we just looked at a house. Are we gonna be getting it? I already put the application in. It was like this whole craziness that was happening at once. We ended up not getting approved for the house because we were not the first person to put an application. They did first serve, first come, first serve or whatever. And all within the time when we didn't get the house, my mom was here, you know, slowly found out that I'm gonna get a hysterectomy. So I told Becky, this is too dramatic. This is too much drama at once. So let's wait to move until after my surgery. So that was something that I was holding on to was, you know what? Let's just let myself deal with this cancer, do the surgery, and then worry about moving because I kind of wanted to heal in the space that I've been used to and what I'm you know, accustomed to. Eric and Ricky decided, we're 
going to move too, actually, which makes sense because they don't want to be in this huge house. They want to be closer to work. It's like all of us were kind of over this location. And um, so then they decided, okay, so we're going to move after I decided I'm going to wait to move. So then I was like, I don't want to be left with this house by myself. Like me and Becky don't want this house to ourselves. Like we don't, I don't really like this house. I never really have, like everyone knows that. It's not really like my cup of tea. So that put us in another situation of, okay, let's start looking for places again. So we thought we were gonna have a little bit of time. All of us, we all thought that we were gonna have a couple of months to try to find somewhere that allows pets and is suitable for us and the location we want, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I think the funniest part is we were all joking about it because we're not moving together. So we were like joking because we we're all looking in the same location. We were pretty much me and Becky and then Eric and Ricky, we were like competing for the same spot because we liked the same type of environment. We wanted a house in the same location. We wanted, you know, a house with pet, four pets. And it was like this whole thing. It was like a funny ongoing joke. So then to top it all off, we no longer had a few months or a couple months to find a place. Our landlord finds out that we're all planning on moving because obviously you tell them that. Becky and I told him, it was about two, two and a half months ago, we said, we're looking, we're gonna be moving. Eric and Ricky told them that they're gonna be moving as well. So our landlord was on top of it, like lickety split, and he said, well, I already have someone who wants to buy the house, so you have to be out in a month. And my oh my went, God, what the fucking shit landlord? I mean, <sighs> Did she tell them that she allegedly has cancer? That she's going to be having a major surgery? Holy shit. So she, I, I look, um, I sympathize with her on this because I, I, we've been in this similar situation as that, as that, but we weren't like living with roommates, but like, you know, we thought we had more time and then the landlord's like, no, we already have somebody looking at the house. So you need to move out. And we're just like, what the fuck? Like, are you kidding me? You know? So we had to move in with our sis, my sisters for a bit because it was like no time. We literally had no time. But, um, honestly, I have my reservations about them moving to just together by themselves. Like, it could be looked at as a, both a negative and a positive thing. Like, negatively, Amber could make the situation more toxic, and it could be her death sentence. I mean, I don't know. But the, in a positive sense, you know, maybe th this is going to give her full responsibility, her and Becky full responsibility. Um, and make them more of an adult, you know? they have a house now and stuff like that, you know, whatever. I'm surprised that she's not just going to go and buy one. I mean, considering the income that she, that she makes, you, you, you would think that she would just go up right and buy one that may be easier for her. She'd probably be able to buy a pretty good house, but that's just me. I mean, I mean, when we moved here, it was like, it, it was a really good how it the housing market was pretty good okay and we were staying with my sisters when we found it because we moved out of the apartment that we were living in and we just wanted out okay because our upstairs neighbors was just he was just a menace to, I mean he was a menace to the neighborhood basically um, he just did not care about the fact that there are people living under him that the walls were really thick um, and that we could hear everything he was doing. It was, oh my God, it was a nightmare. And he was always up at all hours of the fucking night. And it, oh guys, it was just a literal nightmare. And sometimes I wake up yelling, like, shut up, Jordan, you know, <laughs> that was his name. But, um, because I, you know, I have night, I still have nightmares about it, but, um, it, we got really lucky here. Like, but the, the, the owner, because we, we bought the house. We didn't, we're not running it. The owner um, of this house um, really fought us on getting it because I guess she wanted to give it to somebody else who was going to, you know, fix it up and then flip it, basically. But it didn't happen. Like, they tried to charge, they tried to up the price more than it was worth. So, it didn't work out for her. So, um, yeah, but... We got really lucky with this house, but, and it's really nice here. So, um, but 
I don't know. I mean, as for Amber, I, I, and Becky, I really hope this works out for them and that this is a turning point in a good, in the, in a good direction. And I think it's, if this is, she's trying to move closer to Becky's family. I think this is really a good idea. At least gives Becky to spend more time with her mom. You know what I mean? And maybe it's closer to, to a hospital, you know, so Amber can be, you know, have, you know, be closer to where she needs to be, you know, but whatever. I'm trying to be nice, okay, but at the same time, I'm still skeptical, skeptical, ugh, about the whole cancer thing, whether she has it or not. I mean, these past couple videos have, I mean, been a mess. I mean, not just couple, quite a few. And I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting to think that maybe she's intentionally confusing us to, so she can lie and manipulate more the situation. I don't know. I don't know. It's a theory. I don't know if it's true, but here we go. I, I'm not hating on the, the dress either. I think that's a really pretty dress. I, I mean, that's something I would wear. Like this. Okay. So. Anyway, sorry for the long tangent. Two days ago, I said, I'm going to message every single place I can find and tell them I'm ready to move in, like, within a few days. And I want to move in before surgery. And a Girl, little, a bit. oh my God. This is see that, I, but honestly, it's, it, I mean, the way it, from what it sounds like, if she's telling the truth and I'm just going to take this with a grain of salt and just pretend she's telling the truth. Um, cause we don't know, you know, cause she's such a habitual liar, but, um, that's not right. I, I hate that. You know, I hate being in that situation where you're pretty much forced to move, you know? Because, you know, if, if for an Amber situation, the way she's talking, like, if they want to find a new place, they want somewhere where they really like it, it's not really giving them much time. I mean, at least when we, like, when my, see, when, we got lucky because we have, we had, I have two sisters that live, that lived in a big, like, townhome. And so there was space enough for everybody and stuff like that. And, um, we had somewhere to go, you know, for the in-between time. And we had time to just look for a place that we really, really wanted. There, I mean, it was hard because, like, because of how, uh, how good the housing market was, because it was summer, um, which is, like, a prime time to pick a place. Um, it was, like, some of the places that we looked at were, like, people were snatching him up like crazy. Like, we found this place with this finished, like, beautiful garden and... Had a, it had a really uh, amazing, like, basement and everything. I was really happy about that. I was like, oh, I can, you know, get workout stuff and, you know, whatever. And, um, but somebody snatched it up. And then I found this place at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I told my parents, I'm like, hey, look at this place. I didn't even know that it had a pool. And they went ahead and looked at it and put a, you know, their application in and everything and it went through right away and we're just like, holy crap, you know, it's, it's cheaper than, you know, it, it's actually a lot cheaper than we, uh, initially had our price at. And it, I mean, it was perfect. It was a perfect, it was like, it was a perfect coin dink, you know what I mean? Like, but anyways, um, yeah, but all right. I, I'm just, uh, on this case, I am, I am so... I'm sorry that you and Becky are having to deal having with a landlord like that because the landlords suck. And part of me was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to find a place that quick. There's no way we're going to be able to pack that quick. There's no way all of this is going to happen that quick because to find a place to do the application, to be approved, to go through the process, to pack all the shit, to get a U-Haul, to drive it, to unpack, like all that stuff before my surgery. First of all, I'm putting a lot of stress on my body. But long story short, somehow, some way, things went in mine and Becky's favor That's and good. we're moving in a couple of days yesterday we spent all day packing today we're going to be spending all day packing we just did a little packing now we're taking our little food break and that's why I couldn't cook because the kitchen is an absolute wreck we're all packing Eric Ricky me Becky and mm, okay it is I kind of got emotional last night and I cried a little bit because this has been our home you guys have seen we've had our Christmases here together all of us we've had our Thanksgivings here together all of us um, there's, I'm so crying. I don't want to cry. We're not doing it. There's just a lot of freaking memories up in this house. And it's just kind of crazy that like, I mean, the only, okay, look, the only thing I worry about is Becky's going to be alone with Amber. 
I mean, at least she had a buffer with um, Eric and Ricky around. But uh, now it's just going to be her and Amber. And I hope that Becky is able to handle that. But then again, I don't feel sorry for her because she, you know, she allow, she's allowed herself to stay with Amber and to be in the position that she's in. And the only happy thing about this is that it's, it's going to be closer to her, to her family. So maybe she'll have that sort of buffer there, but, um, that's the only thing I worry about, but okay. You know, whatever, whatever. It's no longer going to be, you know, home. I'm all over behind the camera. I'm embarrassed. She's over there chomping on her food. <laughs> Listen, it's just weird. And I also feel bad for my animals. I, I say this every time I move because I've been doing YouTube for so long that I've moved several times since doing it. And I say this every time. This is Rarity, Wasabi, and Twinkie's home. And they have no idea what's happening. Okay, they see all these boxes and crazy mayhem. But it's like, are they processing yeah. like what's really happening? Yeah, and then I just feel so bad because it's like, this is what they're used to. They love this. This is their home. They have their... Honestly, okay, when we had to stay with our sisters um, for, for, like, beginning of the summer, because we moved in to this place around July 4th, I think it was, like, 2000, either 15 or 16, um, my cat, Nix, Nixie, did not like my sister's place, and, um, I didn't, I mean, I, I like visiting, but I, it's not a place I'd want to live because, especially that at the time they were staying in their old apartment because they got an upgrade. Um, but I had to sleep in the basement. There were bugs and stuff and my cat wasn't happy. My, and plus that then my sister's two dogs would sleep, um, in crates at night down, down there with me. It was not a happy situation. So the first day we went, you know, cause what we did, we moved in gradually and then, um, the stress of being all being together again at my sister's place was got too much. And then we, we decided to just do a day where we're just going to move in, you know, and, um, because it was just, I don't want to get into it, but, um, the first night I brought Nixie home here she was fine. Like literally she made herself right at home. She was really happy and she adjusted really well. Cause at the time we didn't have Leia. We didn't have Winston. Obviously we just had lady and Nixie and it worked out just perfectly. Lady was so happy. Nixie was happy. It's like, it was perfect. It literally was perfect. But anyways, they're happy here. That's what I'm trying to say. They are very, very, very happy here. The spots where they lay, the spots where they like to jump and be annoying, the spots where they eat, the spots where they play, you know. I'm sure, look, I'm sure if the place is nice and, you know, it's got a good vibe for the animals, they're going to fit right in. Like, they're going to just, like, you know, you'd be may, maybe surprised about how happy they, may, they might be. But I don't know. That. I'm just going off like the, you know, my animals. But. This is their home. And it's now it's like I'm taking them from that. And something about that really rubs me wrong. I hate it so much because it's. Really? <sighs> really? Okay. They... Like seriously, Amber, with the uh, abuse allegations hanging over you, animal abuse allegations, you, re <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I've seen video footage of her abusing her animals and. For me, it's like, what kind of person would do that? And I think she doesn't realize that it is abuse and she thinks it's okay. And she rationalizes it that it's okay. But it's abuse. And, um... But that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't doubt that she doesn't love her animals. I think she really does. But there's some things that she's done that is what a lot of, a lot of us have, have categorized as abuse. And I don't think she understands that. She doesn't understand her, some of her actions, you know, but that's just me. Cause he, you know, it's funny. Um, this is a side story. Like when the, um, the guy, uh, the guy from, we had somebody else from animal control come out recently for a second visit. And, to follow up, whatever. And I don't know how I got in talking about it, 
but I started talking about Amber and I, I was asking some questions and I didn't show them any clips or whatever, but I just said, you know, what really, you know, does this kind of stuff count as abuse? Cause I was kind of curious to hear it from an animal, animal control person. And they said, yes, some of the stuff that I've talked about, what I've seen on Amber's videos, like I've, I saw a compilation video of all the abuse that is, you know, that people are accusing her of. He told me, yeah, that like some of that counts as abuse. So Amber, Amber, Amber has unintentionally, I think, abused her animals. And she needs to address that can create a home where we're moving. And I said that last time too. I was terrified they weren't gonna like it here and they didn't at first. Twinkie hated it, Rarity hated it, Wasabi hated it. They were all nervous wrecks. That happens every single time we move. Um, I have moved with my animals four times and always in the beginning, it is rough. They don't like it. They don't like the drive there. They don't like- Yeah, Nixie didn't like the drive Sniffing either. around at a new place. It's always uneasy, but then eventually somehow, some way it all ends up working out. So that is literally what's happening before my surgery when I should be like resting and worrying about stupid shit. Like what scented lotion do I want to bring to the hospital? Like instead I'm worried Girl, about- Girl, you don't want to be bringing, you're not going to be using, oh my God. Like seriously, she's not going to be caring about what kind of scented lotion and shit. Like you'd be too fucking conked out, girl. Okay, how much is this U-Haul going to cost? And um, when are we going to be able to go buy furniture because we have none? Like I am- um, I don't think I've ever been in my life this stressed and I feel it physically like in my chest last night before I was going to sleep I was having really bad heart palpitations and I noticed it's because I was thinking negative thoughts so I literally you can ask Becky she's over there she's probably not gonna answer though I started singing positivity like quotes remember babe yep. it was ridiculous I was trying to like do like the whole positive affirmation thing oh, and like you were also talking in your sleep. I was talking in my sleep oh. what was I saying I never talk in my sleep I must be stressed to the max that's scary. Jesus. Oh my God. So you didn't know what I was saying or anything? What? It was all jumbled. See? I told you guys. I, it's just like, the biggest reason why I wanted there, to- I, I'm kind of curious as to how the house is going to be when they move out. What kind of damages? Move before my surgery once finding out we only have a month to stay here is because during that month, I'm going to be recovering. I don't know how this whole surgery situation is going to happen for me. I don't know how many heal. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know the pain. I don't know nothing like at all. I don't like everything is the unknown. And I have so much stress regarding like the surgery. Like, am I even going to make it? I know it's such a bad, disgusting thought, but obviously it's there. You should have con con you should contact your landlord and be like, look, I need a month or so extension because I'm having surgery. It's a major surgery and I need time to heal from that. I'm sure you, they would understand, right? But maybe not. I mean, I don't know. And it's something I worry about. And I, I told my mom yesterday when I wake up from surgery, I'm going to freaking ball my eyes out because I'm going to be so grateful to be alive. You know, it's just like those situations where it's like, you don't realize how much you love life until you might lose it, you know? But anyways, wow. Why. Some actual truth coming from Amberlyn Reed. How very true. See, here's the thing. There are moments in Amberlyn Reed's video where there is actually truth and clarity coming from her. And this is one of those moments where I'm like, okay, so this just shows that maybe she somewhat gets it. Because it is very true. You don't realize how much you love life until there's a possibility of you losing it. It, it, it goes as, without saying for a lot of things. Like, you don't know how, uh, you know how much you love a certain thing and, and, until you actually lose it. Until it's th being threatened to ta be taken away from you. It's just one of those things, you know? It's like, hindsight's a bitch, you know? I want to move before surgery is because it makes no sense to pack and move while I'm recovering when they told me I can't even lift something this size, like at all. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> like, I can't even lift something this size for weeks. So being able to, I'm not going to have Becky do everything. I'm sorry. That's not happening. I said that's not happening. Girl, not you happening. may have to. You may have to. Either that, you may have to be put into a place to recover. Girl. And we all know, I mean, if, that's the case. It's not going to be true. 
don't like Amber. I'm gonna advise don't speak on stuff pre surgery because you don't know how you're gonna be. Like, just go with the flow with it because that's the w one way to alleviate stress. Just go with the flow. You know, don't overthink it and crap like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand the added stress of the possibility because of her size of dying, but don't overthink it. This is all on the assumption that she's actually going to have this thing. But I'm not going to really truly believe it until I see proof. You know what I mean? That's just, I mean, I don't know how she's going to give us proof. Maybe some paperwork, maybe hospital photos. I don't know. Um, I don't want to her to go as far as showing us the incision unless she's like completely okay with that. Because that's just, you know, there's a thing called boundaries, people. Um, but that's how I feel. I was like, we need to move before. So we are. And uh, this house looks crazy. You guys, I'm sure you guys are used to the walls. Look at, there's like nothing on the walls. Only, this is my Miley Cyrus. <laughs> there's like nothing on the walls. That's Becky's. Um, there's boxes everywhere. Let me show you. Just to give you guys a little glimpse, I'm just going to show you the den. Um, this is where we're putting everything that um, we're taking with us that's already packed. What's today's date, actually? Oops. All of this oh, so check far. Um, we still have a lot to do. We really, really do. And I've got a lot done now. <laughs> this mean. is not the type of stress I need before surgery, but I'm trying my hardest to to look at the the positives and of the it. And the thing is, know? she can't. I mean, if this is allegedly true, if this is true, then she can't postpone it. You know what I mean? Like, oh god, what a fucking time to be made to move. I mean, back this is all on the basis of which, well, that she's telling the truth, you guys. I really, at this moment, don't have a, another theory. You know, I don't have anything that could replace what she's saying. You know what I mean? Like, because, you know, honestly, all we can do at this point is make assumptions, but we don't know if it's entirely true or not. So right now my, re I'm just going off base what I'm seeing, but my opinion could change later, you know, into somewhere that I consider nice. We get to finally like create a life together. If that makes sense. So, so what, so what was this? A life together. I mean, you didn't have a life here. Like, what was this? I was literally. That's one. You know, I mean, I get like the kind of like, oh, you know, getting our own place and just being together as a couple. I mean, I get that aspect of it, but you know, don't dismiss the entirety of what you had here. You know. Maybe for her, it's like her version of you know becoming a full adult is you know getting their own place and being fully responsible adult which I, I i i understand and i get i mean i i in a way like i envy that she's that she's out on her own kind of thing you know something i wish i could be but you know what i mean it's like i know eventually i'm gonna get there hopefully soon like in the next five years i'm eating good you know what i put on mine that i what? Is it good with it? Mm. <laughs> oh. Becky doesn't like mine because she doesn't like mayonnaise. I like mayonnaise. I like vegan mayonnaise these days, guys. Like seriously, I wish like more places had it because it's my whole fam, my whole mom and dad and I. We all like it because of the the lack of you know the cholesterol, the lower cholesterol and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm just like real actual mayonnaise these days. Kind of like is all, is an off for me because like. I've had vegan mayonnaise and I don't want to go back. Or lunch meat. You don't like lunch meat? I have lunch meat. She don't like olives. I have olives. And she don't like onions and I have onions. She gets like real chicken. I can't. Her. I, I like break out when I have onions. Like seriously. Onions are just like, ugh. Chicken teriyaki. Anyways. I just had to show that crazy update, you guys. Please. I know some of you hate me and put bad jujus, but the ones who care... Oh my gosh, she's still with us. Look, girl, there are some of us that do put out some not so positive things, but that does not mean we don't give a shit. Please. Good jujus. I'm talking prayers, thoughts. 
if you're a witch, a good witch, do some like good voodoo. Um, <laughs> I just need all like, of the goodness. Good voodoo. We all do. Anyways, I'm gonna eat this and then we have to continue packing because it is crunch time. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Okay, well, obviously something is going. I mean, I'm not gonna dismi dismiss. We can see the boxes and stuff. So some it is. It, I mean, she's moving. Okay, things are going on. And if she's telling the truth, which I'm just going to assume she is at this point, okay? Because I don't have anything to, like, in my mind that I could refute it with, but I have to keep on remembering that, you know, we only get a glimpse of these people's lives, of what, you know, of what she's willing to show us, which is either YouTube or other social media, you know, accounts. We don't have the full picture, so all we can do is make assumptions based off the little pieces that we have. And so, I'm trying to be fair, and I've been angry with her so much lately, And um, but I have to keep on reminding myself to be f fair and just to, ha you know, keep that optimism, because I don't want to be that bitter and cynical person, you know? But at the same time, it's like, I still feel that, um, sorry, I'm just watching the time. I still feel that, you know, I don't feel sorry for the fact that she, how she got cancer because, you know, she had ample opportunity to get herself checked out and she didn't. Um, I don't like her re most recent behavior, the half truths, the lie, obvious lies, the mistruths, the, um, just the, the confusion that she's putting out. I think it's really shady. It's really shitty. And I've been accused of by some people, you know, that I have a narrative for these videos and I want things to go a certain way. Look, I don't have a fucking narrative. Okay. I, I just want to know what the truth is. That's all. If that's a narrative, then fine, that's a narrative. If wanting the truth is such a bad thing, a bad narrative to have, then, you know, whatever. You think what you want to think, but that's all I care about is the truth. I just want her to stop putting out such toxicity and promoting this obesity culture, you know, and monetize, you know, just all the things that is bad. I just want her to stop doing. I want her to, you know, turn herself around and be a more positive influence because she's a really well-known figure. She's an obese person and I'm afraid somebody younger, more gullible could, you know, emulate her because they say, look how much money and fame this girl is, is getting, you know, gee, maybe I can do the same thing. It's like, no, 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 no. We don't want this happening. We need to to fight to reverse, you know, to fight against this kind of narrative, this kind of, I mean, she's, I don't know. I mean, Amber is kind of like one of the, you know, she's created a, a, some sort of a, a YouTube cult in, in a way, a small part of YouTube culture. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's what I see. And it's a scary thing. And I just, we got to fight against it, you know? Anyways, um, so hopefully tomorrow I'm going to be going to the gym. Um, I have a fan now. It works. I, th it, I, I was stupid and I was like, I, it's not working, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I, I was trying to get it to work. I was going to take it back. And then I realized after my dad took a look at it, he's like, oh, well, Lisa, you need four batteries, not two. I felt like such a moron. <laughs> I was like, I was so mad last night. Because I, I was trying to get it to work, you know, just I wanted to make sure it worked before I go to the gym. And <laughs> I need another two, two batteries. I'm like, oh my god. Why? Why? Anyways, um, aside from that, I don't know what's going to happen this weekend. Um, we shall see, right? I mean... We're just kind of going with the flow of things as of late, you know, going day by day. Because it's all, you know, with with how things are right now in the world, especially in my neck of the woods, it's like we've gotten several, I mean, yesterday was our second coronavirus alert. I was in the gym 
just finishing up my cardio routine routine when we got this alert basically saying that coronavirus numbers are really high in my area and that it's imperative that we wear masks and it's like that's what we did you know my um, my dad mom who has as asthma we all wore masks and um my and I'm gonna say this again I know I said this in my last video I was so mad because when I walked into that fucking gym it was hotter than than Satan's balls like seriously and when I walked out though I was like are the fans even on no we don't want it to cir you know to circulate the virus I'm like no okay look I don't even know if that's a true thing whether having a fan on could circulate it like, I'm very close to, like, reporting the gym and maybe, you know, calling, like, the, uh, calling customer service for Planet Fitness or whatever and trying to get them to turn the fans on. Because there are people, I mean, like I said in my other video, there's an older guy, elderly man in there who was, like, so close to passing out so many times. And I said, dude, you know, you, you, maybe you, sh you know, should stop for the day. And he's like, no, no, you know, I could do this. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like. I wish I would, you know, all I could do is help him, you know, as best as I could because nobody else was stepping up to the plate and I, you know, I cleaned the machines for him and I stayed close to him. So, he, you know, to make, to make sure he was doing okay. And, um, I just felt so bad. I felt so helpless, you know, and I wish I could just buy a bunch of like fans and then pass them out to people or give them to Planet Fitness to give to people. Whatever, you know, I was the, I had this crazy idea last that maybe I should start, start up like a charity or a GoFundMe to buy fans for my gym, for people, whatever. And so like give them to the Planet Fitness people and then like they can pass them out, whatever, since the fact that they won't allow, put the fans on, but that may, they may not even accept that. So I was like, cause you know. They don't want to circulate the virus. And I'm just worried that, um, me bring they might not allow me to have the fan in there. I'm thinking, are you fucking kidding me? I'm working out. I'm going to be sweating, you know, and exerting myself. And it's, heat index is high, okay? Like, what the fuck? I mean, you know, if that's the case, you should have the gym closed for the, for the, for the high heat, heat index instead of allowing people to come in and pass out, you know, from working. I mean, it's ridiculous. Making them wear masks when they're working out is ridiculous. Okay. The, you know, we had high coronavirus numbers before. And I mean, this is one thing I'm, I'm not happy about with regards to being a man, you know, mandatory where I'm at, but, um, it's just like, there should be stipulation, you know, some sort of like stipulation for, for gyms. Like, you know, you don't have to wear it while working out, but you know, just keep your distance from people. You know what I mean? Not have to maybe have like a queue, not so many people working out, you know, have a certain time limit. A person can work out that way. People wouldn't have to wear masks. You could have the fan on. And then, um, you know, not have to worry about people passing out on you. Like, it's just ridiculous. But, um, yeah, I'm going to see what happens tomorrow with the fan. And, I'm, I mean, I'm really hoping nobody, they just don't take notice, whatever. But, um, you know, I could get, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I honestly think that it's, nothing's going to happen, you know. Like, I think I did see some person with a big fan, with a fan like that, because that's where I, I think I got the idea from. Um, I think I saw somebody, and it kind of popped in my head, like, gee, maybe I should get a fan. But, um, and I didn't see anybody bitching at them, so I'm hoping the same goes for me, because my fan's kind of a, it's not a small, like, tiny fan I can fit around my neck. You know, I, ha I saw a sport one at my at Myers and it was like a cheapie and it had like a water thing but it was crap didn't work and um that's why I got the Honeywell one because it has a pretty good power to it so I wanted something that was you know was not just a like a 
cheapy, like, crap one. I wanted to get a relatively good one. Because I can also have this at my desk as well. I can hook it into, like, my, my USB and, and not have to use the battery. So I could have, like, if when I'm working and stuff like that, I can use it then as well. So, um, there's an upside to that. So it's really multi-purpose. But, um... The good thing about it is it has a thing where you can carry it and I can put it on the bars. I, I can prop it up somewhere. And then when I'm not, when I'm on certain machines that I can't use it, I can just place it next to my water bottle. So like, but that's just pretty much what I'm going to be doing because I, for at this point, that is the only way I know I'd be able to, to do a full, a full workout and, and not possibly pass out. Because at this point, you know, I can't afford to get gym equipment right now. There's a lot of outlay. There's things that we need to do that's more important. And um, that is the only way I can work out right now. I'm looking for used inline skates. And I need to go into like a Dick Sporting Goods or something and actually try a pair on. See what's, or at least get myself like trying to find out what size I am. And then I can find inline skates that are that size. Um... I'm looking on eBay right now. So, um, that's what I need to do. Cause I, uh, but even then I'm like, I'm kind of worried because of how hot it's been for the past two weeks. It's been really bad. And it's like right now I couldn't even go out and skate or ride a, or ride a bike. It's that bad. You guys, it is literally like stepping outside right now is like having a hot blanket on you all the time. It, that's how bad it is. It's just, you can't, you can't even really swim because it's, it's like, you'd have to be underwater like constantly. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that bad. Like, I mean, my dogs don't even like being out there. I mean, my, my dogs love being outside. So it's like, oh, it's a fucking nightmare. But anyways, um, Aside from that, I'm doing really well, you guys. I, I, my weigh-in is tomorrow. I'm hoping that my scale is going to work. Um, so, I don't know. And also, I may be looking for a new primary care. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just, I like my primary care, but at the same time, it's like, I think I need to find one maybe that understands better and that's not just going to send me off to... You know, I just don't feel like I'm getting the kind of care that I, th that I need. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I've been really mulling it over. My parents and I have been talking about it. Um, it just, I, the therapist appointment was more like a, it was pretty much like an introductory appointment. Whenever I talked, just, um, I think it was a m medical assistant. I'm not sure. But, um, it's a really good place and they can even come to your house. It's, it's really awesome, by the way. And they don't even make you pay a copay or anything like that. And, but, um, it just made me think a lot about a lot of things about my, you know, my primary care. And cause I did get into like how I feel like I'm not in my medical treatment that, you know, and, the, and how I'm being treated about with regards to pain and everything. And I just, it just made me think also, oh God, keep on forgetting. Um, so Luckily, the person that saw me yesterday also, um, goes to the same college that I do and OSU. Cause see, there's Columbus State Community College, which is what I've been going to. And then I was going to transfer at some point to, oh, to Ohio State. And, um, I found out yesterday that Columbus State is all online right now and they've they've really got good tutoring for online tutoring programs. It's just, everything is actually a lot better than it was the last time I was in school. So I'm actually thinking about, um, enrolling for, I don't know about like, cause it's going to be not a lot of time for me to prepare for autumn semester. I don't think there's any more classes from what I looked. Um, there's not a lot of classes. So I'm thinking about going for the next semester next spring, like, you know, um, the winter, spring, whatever, um, semester. So, um, yeah, I, I'm kind of really excited about that because, um, I just want to finish my education. That's just pretty much where I'm at with that. So, um, I'm hoping by then I have a, my job and I have my training down and then I can go to school and just work the hours I want to work because the, the hours are very flexible, believe it or not. So, um, 
yeah, it just, that's my plan, my, my short term goal right now. Cause I, I don't have very many classes I need to take in order to finish for my associate's degree. So, um, and plus there's some things I want, I may want to change as well. Like it just, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot, you guys, it's just, I, I need time. I'm, I need time to sit down and just figure, figure it out. And I feel like if I do winter, like winter spring semester, that'll give me time to finish the job training and get on my way with that. And then also like, you know, go to school as well. You know what I mean? You know, get ready for school. So, um, yeah, cause, uh, Right now, I mean, my, the schools around where I'm at, like the colleges, they don't want to, they are working really hard not to spread the virus. And so they are, they have, a, they've put a lot of implementations in place. So I'm really happy about that. So I feel confident that I'd probably be able to do well because the problem with last time was the tutoring program for math sucked. They have peer tutoring. I didn't get a peer tutoring for quite a while and I was so behind that I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch up. So that's why I stopped. And then I got really sick and I just decided to wait for a while. And then I was going to go back before coronavirus hit. And I'm like, I, you know, wait for that. And then because of, you know, I figured maybe they'll put special measures in, you know, Columbus State would, and it took them some time, but, um, they've moved all online. So I'm hoping I'm just hoping things work out. But anyways, um, that's pretty much it for now. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, hit the notification bell. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video or any of the videos I've made so far on my platform, please feel free to leave a comment below or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. Thank you and good night, you guys. Be happy, healthy, and safe, and I love you. Bye. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out.